Imagine, if you will, the vast expanse of the universe stretching infinitely in all directions. Stars, galaxies, and cosmic phenomena stretching as far as the eye can see. It's an overwhelming sight, isn't it? But amidst this grand spectacle, one question has long captivated our curiosity. Where, exactly, is the center of this boundless cosmic arena? Now, you might think that with all our advanced technology and scientific understanding, we'd have a concrete answer to this question. But, alas, the universe isn't quite as straightforward as we'd like it to be. You see, when we observe the universe, it appears remarkably uniform in all directions. The galaxies, stars, and even the temperature of the radiation remain consistent, regardless of where we look. And here's where things get a little tricky. The farther we look into the universe, the farther back in time we are viewing. The light from those distant galaxies has been traveling for billions of years to reach us, so we are literally seeing them as they were when their light first embarked on its cosmic journey. But what about the center? Can we locate a specific point that could be considered the heart of it all? Well, you might think that a place where all directions appear to be receding equally would fit the bill. But the universe doesn't quite play by our rules. You see, the redshift of light from distant objects, which causes them to appear as if they're moving away from us, is due to two factors, the actual movement of the objects and the expansion of the universe itself. But here's the thing. This doesn't mean these objects are moving away from a central point. Rather, it's more like raisins in a rising loaf of bread, all moving away from each other as the dough expands. So, to sum it all up, every observer in the universe could claim that they are at or near the center, as everything appears to be moving away from them. That's right, in a way, we could all claim to be the center of the universe. But the most intriguing part of our universal story is, well, that part is still to come. Stay with us. What's up, my amazing and curious folks? Welcome back to another episode of Curiosity Wonderland. I'm your host, Cesar, always ready to dive into the uncharted territories of knowledge. And with me today, as always, is the wonderful and insightful Sonia. Hi, everyone. I can't wait to dive into today's topic. It's a big one, literally. Haha, -ha, you're absolutely right, Sonia. Remember, folks, before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we drop a new episode. Now, let's get started. Now, in the grand cosmic scheme of things, we'd imagine that if we point our telescopes and look far enough in any direction, we'd eventually start to see differences. But surprisingly, that's not the case. The universe on large cosmic scales appears pretty much the same regardless of where we look. The numbers, types, and densities of galaxies, stars, and even radiation remain consistent. Isn't that fascinating? Absolutely. It's hard to wrap your head around it. So you're saying that the universe is uniform? That no matter where we look, we see the same sort of things? Exactly, Sonia. And here's the thing. The biggest differences we see are not because of the direction we're looking in, but rather how far we're looking. The more distant the objects, the more their light is shifted towards longer wavelengths. This shift is what gives us the impression that these objects are moving away from us at high speeds. So, it's not about where we're looking, but how far we're looking. That's a radical concept. So, when we try to find the center of the universe, we're not looking for a specific place, but rather a specific distance or time. You're catching on, Sonia. But it's even more complex than that. The idea of movement and how it affects the light or waves that an object emits is crucial here. We're all familiar with the concept of Doppler effect, right? It's why an ambulance siren sounds different as it approaches and then passes us. The sound waves are compressed as the ambulance is moving towards us, and then they're stretched out as it's moving away. This same principle applies to light. So the redshift we see from distant galaxies is like the Doppler effect for light. The galaxies aren't actually red, but their light appears shifted towards longer or redder wavelengths because they're moving away from us? Absolutely correct, Sonia. You've hit the nail right on the head. So this shifting of light waves due to motion is what we call the Doppler effect. Now for light, 
A change in the wavelength doesn't mean a higher or lower pitch like with sound. Instead, it translates to higher or lower energies. Longer wavelengths translate to lower frequencies, lower energies, and redder colors. Whereas shorter wavelengths equate to higher frequencies, higher energies, and bluer colors. And we can measure this shift in color? Absolutely, and that's the fascinating part. By measuring the shift in spectral lines emitted or absorbed by specific atoms, we can determine just how red-shifted or blue-shifted the light actually is. This was notably first observed by Vesto Slipher in the 1910s in what we later recognized as the initial evidence for the expanding universe. Could you give us some examples to help clarify this? Of course, think about a rainbow. We can see the graduation of colors from red to violet. Now imagine if that rainbow were moving away from you at a high speed. The light you're seeing would be stretched out, making the colors shift towards the red end of the spectrum. This is essentially what happens with galaxies moving away from us. And the opposite effect would happen if it was moving towards us. Precisely. If a galaxy were moving towards us, its light would be compressed, causing it to shift towards the blue end of the spectrum. But as we look further away, we notice a trend. The further away an object is, the more red-shifted it appears to be. This has led scientists to propose two possibilities. Either the objects are moving away from us through space, or the universe is expanding, causing the light to continually shift during its journey to us. So, when any galaxy emits light, that light undergoes a transformation by the time it reaches an observer. This change is due to the relative motion of the light source and the observer, as well as the expansion of the universe that takes place during the light's journey. The farther away the galaxy is, the greater the observed redshift, and also the greater the observed time dilation. The signal received by the observer will be stretched out over time. Time dilation, that sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. Hehe, it may sound like that, but it's a very real phenomenon in our universe. Now let's dive a bit into Einstein's theory of general relativity. According to it, space isn't just a static background that objects move through. Instead, it's part of a fabric woven with time that evolves based on the matter and energy present within it. So space and time are interconnected? Absolutely. A large mass in a particular location will cause that fabric to curve around that location. This curve compels every quantum in that space to move along a path determined by the curvature of space rather than a straight line. This bending of starlight around the sun was crucial in proving Einstein's predictions in contrast with Newton's older theory of universal gravitation. That's fascinating. So space itself evolves and changes? Exactly. In fact, general relativity dictates that if you have a universe uniformly filled with matter or energy, it can't maintain a static and unchanging space-time. This space-time evolves, causing the light traveling within it to also evolve. The wavelength of light either lengthens as the fabric of space expands or shrinks as it contracts. So, as light travels through the universe, the effects of the evolution of space are imprinted on the light itself, causing its properties to alter by the time it reaches our eyes. So, there's no definitive way to determine which effect, the expansion of the universe or the motion of the galaxies, is responsible for the primary shift we observe. Both can provide multiple solutions to the equations of general relativity. So, we can't really separate the two effects. It's challenging. When we measure the light shift from one object, we can't definitively say which component is due to the expanding universe and which is due to non-cosmological factors. However, by observing many objects at varying distances, we can discern the overall trends that hint at how the universe is evolving as a whole. How was this discovered? This was noted back in the late 1920s. The evidence pointed to an expanding universe in line with the predictions of general relativity for a uniformly filled universe. This knowledge allows us to predict the future state of the universe and interpret its past. So the universe isn't really exploding outwards from a central point? Exactly. It's more akin to a loaf of dough rising with raisins throughout it. The dough represents the universe and raisins the galaxies. As the dough rises and expands, so does the space between the raisins but there's no central point from which everything is moving away. 
If we imagine the universe as a leavening ball of dough, with each galaxy as a raisin, we can get a better understanding of the expansion. As the dough rises, the raisins seem to move apart, but they're not really moving through the dough. Each raisin or galaxy sees itself as stationary. However, every other raisin appears to move away, with distant ones seeming to move faster. That's quite a metaphor. So we're like a raisin, seemingly stationary, but seeing other galaxies moving away from us. Precisely. Now one might wonder how big this ball of dough is or where its center might be. But those aren't really answerable questions because we can't see beyond the edge of our dough or universe. What we do know is that our universe, as far as we can observe, is remarkably uniform. And how far can we see in the universe? We can see out to about 46 billion light years in all directions, thanks to the Big Bang that occurred 13.8 billion years ago. That's quite a view. It certainly is. But even with such a vast view, there are no constraints on how large our universe truly is, what lies beyond our visibility, or even if our universe has a center. All we can conclude is that everything seems consistent with general relativity. So, although the observable universe extends about 46 billion light years from our point of view, there's more universe beyond that which we simply can't observe. We're not at the center, and what we perceive is determined more by the amount of time that's passed since the light we see was emitted, rather than the geometry of the universe. It's fascinating how all the objects we see are actually from the past, like cosmic time travel. Absolutely. As we look back through space, we're also looking back through time, seeing objects as they were when the universe was younger, hotter, denser, and expanding more rapidly. The light from these objects has been stretched to longer wavelengths over the entirety of its journey. That's mind-boggling. Is there a way to observe this uniformity? Yes, we can look at the cosmic microwave background, the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. Although it has a rough same temperature in all directions, there are tiny deviations. These deviations align with our motion through the universe. So we're moving through the universe at a rate of roughly 368 kilometers per second from the perspective of the sun. That is seriously fast. Observing the cosmic microwave background, we see a uniform bath of radiation at precisely 2.7255 Kelvin. And there are variations in this temperature. Yes, small ones, depending on which direction we look. These variations correspond to our universe's imperfections. So these variations are like the indicators of our universe's little quirks? Exactly. We also notice that one direction looks a bit hotter than the opposite direction, which we call a dipole in the cosmic microwave background radiation. What causes this dipole? This could be caused by our actual motion through the universe. If we adjusted our speed or moved to a location about 17 million light years away, we'd appear to be at a point that's at rest with respect to the observed cosmological expansion. So we could trick ourselves into thinking we're at the universe's center? In a way, yes. But remember, nearby galaxies' motions can induce an apparent dipole in the observer's microwave sky. So even the nearby galaxies can influence what we observe? Indeed. It's all part of the intricate dance of the universe. It's like a cosmic ballet, isn't it? You could say that. The universe is a complex and beautiful place. So we come to the realization that while we can see about 46.1 billion light years in all directions, 17 million light years is an insignificant fraction of the radius of the universe. And that means we're not really near the center. That's right. The truth is, any observer in any galaxy would conclude that they were at or very near the center as well. So it's all about perspective. Exactly. Everything we see appears as it was when its light was emitted. And this light has been shifted by both the relative motions of what we're observing and by the expansion of the universe. So we're essentially seeing the universe as it was, not as it is? Precisely. The universe is centered on us in the sense that we exist a finite amount of time after the Big Bang, and we can only observe out to finite distances. But the universe itself could be infinite? Yes, it could be large, loop back on itself, or be infinite. We simply do not know. What we can say with certainty is that the universe is expanding, radiation is being stretched to longer wavelengths, 
It's becoming less dense and more distant objects appear as they were in the past. So asking where the center of the universe is can lead to the conclusion that there is no center? That's it. The fact that there is no center is indeed one of the most profound conclusions of all. So to sum it all up, the universe's center is a profound mystery. When we look around us, the universe appears uniform and consistent, regardless of the direction. The differences we observe are more about distance and hence time, rather than direction. And while we might be tempted to think of a universe expanding from a central point, much like a loaf of bread, the reality is much more intriguing. Each galaxy, each observer could lay claim to being at or near the center of their own observable universe. It's like we're all in a cosmic dance, each of us at the center of our own stage. Exactly. And when we look at the cosmic microwave background, even that tells a similar story. We might see a slight variance, a little dip in temperature, but that's just a reflection of our own motion through space. The universe, it seems, doesn't have a center. Or rather, every point could be considered the center. Talk about a plot twist. Indeed. And as we continue to explore, who knows what other mysteries we'll uncover. Right. That's it for today's episode of Curiosity Wonderland. We hope you found our journey through the universe as fascinating as we did. And if you did, don't forget to blast that like button. And share your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to know your perspectives on the center of the universe. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends. Let's spread this cosmic mystery far and wide. Yes, let's. Thanks for joining us on this journey through space and time. See you in the next episode. Goodbye, everyone. Keep wondering, keep questioning, and remember, you're at the center of your own universe. Today's fascinating journey through the universe was inspired by an article titled, Where is the True Center of the Universe? by Ethan Siegel on Big Think, published on November 2nd, 2023. If you'd like to explore more, you'll find the full URL in the video description. And with that, I'm off. See you next time.